What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Friday, August 20th. I, mean, I guess this means we have two podcasts today. We're Season's here. Season's here. You get an extra podcast on this episode. We will break down the AFC and NFC West win totals with our good pal Larry Hartstein in the feed. we got six other divisions coming up uh, on the show. Week two preseason preview. Larry, what's up, buddy? Great to see you, Will. And, you know, I don't think I've seen you on a show since you got the sponsorship from Bud Light. And it just warms my heart because I grew up in St. Louis. I basically grew up on Bud Light. I love to hear it. I love to hear it. I don't um, I don't know. If, I mean, we do. We are big Bud Light fans. I don't know if this particular show is sponsored by it. I just I just read what Devo tells me to. But yes, uh, you can see the giant Bud Light uh, sign in the background. And we have greatly enjoyed their sponsorship. I'm jealous of anybody who grew up near Bud Light. Um, I'm also jealous of anybody who's hitting winners on Sportsline. You guys are doing lots of them. I know the early edge is killing it. It's been killing it for for months. You and Coach and, and Mike McClure uh, knocking out winners. Uh, give us a little. Uh, is there any, any promos going on over Sportsline right now? Yeah, there's always a promo. If you use the code edge at Sportsline, we give you 30 days for free to check out the site. And the show actually introduced a new uh, handicapper this morning. I don't know if you've heard it yet. Uh, Allie O'Neill, a young Ooh. woman uh, who has a real knack for baseball winners. So uh, yeah, check it out. The early edge. All right. Early edge podcast, wherever podcasts are found. And of course, sportsline.com. Tons of great content, tons of picks. Football season's coming up. You better lock in your Sportsline subscription now because you will want what the experts are dishing out. And uh, I should also point out that you and RJ, along with the Sportsline, RJ White, who was on the show earlier this week, have at Sportsline.com, you can get y'all's win total, the, the package. It's, that's going to be ready, I think, maybe next week. Yeah, I'm not sure on the details, but uh, yeah, every team broken down by RJ and myself, uh, in-depth, great stuff. Yeah, RJ said, I think there's... It, I can't remember if he said it before the podcast or on the podcast, but maybe there's something like involving legal that has to, you know, it's going to get clear, but then, <laughs> but then it'll be ready to roll out. Uh, let's talk about some of the teams and we'll begin with the AFC West where the chiefs are clearly the favorite. I mean, it's, you know, they're like minus 400 to win the freaking division. Um, you know, is it, I get it. I mean, I get, I get why the, why the, uh, why, why, they, why that is the way it is. I mean, I, I don't blame, um, anybody for making the chiefs massive favorites because they've been to what three straight AFC championship games of Patrick Mahomes, their win total sits at a robust 12 and a half. Uh, what do you think about the chiefs and any interest in going like fading them and going under? I can't imagine. Right. Well, since Andy Reid took over, they've gone over their win total every year. Uh, yeah, it's the only team in the league. They've got an eight year streak of going over their win total. So no, no way I'm going to under on this team with Orlando Brown, Joe Tooney. And, you know, they, that was obviously the glaring need. We all saw them get, you know, debilitated in the Super Bowl, yeah. uh, by not being able to protect. Well, they invested a ton of money there. So yeah, I mean, the fact they can lose four games and you can cash it at plus plus one twenty. the only way I could look is over. Yeah, I, I agree with that. This is, and by the way, uh, Trey Smith, their six round pick is flashing big time in the preseason. They got Creed Humphrey in there as well. It really is just impressive by Andy Reid and uh, Brett Veach to, you know, because it's not, you can't just go out and rework your offensive line overnight that easily. Like that, it, it takes some time. And they had a bunch of incumbent guys who, um, you know, Mitchell Schwartz and Eric Fisher that had been there for so long. They both deal with injuries. And like you said, you know, they, they trade for Orlando Brown. They signed Joe Tooney to a massive contract and they have, and they tried to bring in Kyle Long. He suffered an injury. This is just a, uh, a team that has reworked on the fly its biggest weakness and now appears set to make uh, yet another Super Bowl run. I mean, I guess if you got questions about him, it's on the defensive side of things. Pass rush needs to be a little bit better, but they brought in some more bodies on that, on that D line. So Frank Clark and, and Chris Jones, of course, Tyron Matthew, uh, oh, excuse me, Tyron Matthew. Tyron Mathieu is the backbone of the defense and they had some younger players pop like Juan Thornhill uh, looked very good. Legereus Sneed, the fourth round pick in 2020. This is just a team that happens to have the best quarterback in, in professional football may have the current best coach in professional football, or at least the best offensive coach in professional football has the best tight end in the NFL. They have one of the best wide receivers in the NFL and, oh, by the way, they just happen to have a GM who does a really good job drafting along with Andy Reid. I, I agree. There's, there's, there really is no other way to look for this team other than 
the over on the win total. And I, I think their numbers are probably too short to win the AFC and to win the, win the Super Bowl. Yeah, and they're favored in every game except for week two at Baltimore. Uh, I believe it's a pick the last I saw. But it's a really tough opening stretch. I mean, the Browns, the Ravens, the Bills, and the Chargers are four of their first five mm. uh, with the Eagles thrown in there. Uh, but they do get the NFC East, so that's, uh, that's a nice, uh, you know, probably four wins right there. That is a – I mean, they're playing in the first five weeks of the season. They are playing – the th- other the top the other teams. top three teams in the AFC maybe the top four if you if you think the Chargers are gonna be good I mean God that is crazy that's a tough stretch of football and then they also have the but Titans. they're all at home though except for that Baltimore one yeah. yeah um I would anticipate that they start fast anyway you know certainly some of those things are toss up so it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to happen but yeah that would be I, I just think I'm not gonna bet anything on the Chiefs at all this year like I, I probably won't have any preseason I mean I'll bet on the Chiefs but I won't have any pre-season wagers you know whether it's the win total the division odds are too high at this point you know you can't lay that i don't think and um it's just yeah like i said you can't really bet the super bowl or anything like that with them let's find uh what do we think of the chargers are the next team on here their win total nine and a half juice pretty heavily to the under i tend to think larry that the coaching upgrade just blindly the coaching upgrade from from Anthony Land to Joe to Brandon Staley, excuse me, is going to be enough that they can potentially get the over on this win total. But that's pretty robust for a team that you know was seven and nine last year and uh, could maybe see some re- regression from uh, Justin Herbert this season. Yeah, I mean he had an all time great rookie season. Is like he going to quite- be the greatest rookie season of all time? Yeah. And with not a good offensive line and they have Corey Lindsley now. So that's going to definitely stabilize things up front, but you can go over nine at minus minus one twenty five uh, right now. So if you, okay. if you love this team uh, definitely wouldn't lay, wouldn't go over nine and a half when you, when you have nine out there, but you talked about the, the upgrade. I mean, what was it? Four consecutive leads of 16 or more points that they blew five double digit leads. And also, um, you know, Lombardi coming in as the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, upgrades and coaching on both sides of the ball. You know, it's funny that we're saying upgrade. What is he 38 and has never held the head coaching position anywhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we are talking about it as, as an upgrade, you know, Derwin James back. Uh, yeah. A lot of reasons to be excited. Uh, but actually, I do think one thing that does concern me, um, Jared cook for Hunter Henry, uh, that's oh. a downgrade. Oh, really? I, I, I agree. You don't think talent so? Wise, talent-wise, is definitely a downgrade, but financially, like if you factor the contract in there, I think it's probably about even, but I, I tend to agree with you. I'm a big Hunter Henry fan. Um, they have a lot of younger uh, receivers on that roster, too, that they that they really like. Jalen Guyton, Tyron Johnson, um, Josh Palmer, who's a rookie, third-round rookie this year. They actually have Austin Prohl on that, on that team, too. I, so I think they're deep enough in adding Rashawn Slater that the offense should not be a problem. And you know, Lombardi probably got a raw deal based on previous stops. The defense for me, I need to see Joey Bosa and Derwin James get 16 games. If I, if I want to believe this is a playoff team though, because if they lose either or, and, or both of those guys, Bosa maybe might be even more important because they really don't have a second edge rusher there in, in Los Angeles. So I, that, that's sort of a red flag for me is can that defense stay healthy? Can the chargers avoid major injuries? Yeah, with Ingram gone, I totally agree. Uh, I, I kind of like the secondary, you know, with uh, it's Chris Harris, Asante Samuel. Uh, Hayward is gone, but I don't, he wasn't very good. Uh, he's declined. So, uh, yeah. yeah. But I think nine is really just about right. So, I mean, the first one, if you force me, I'm definitely going over on the Chiefs. And this one, I, I just think nine is right. Yeah, nine is a good number. I actually don't even mind the uh, – so over at um, Caesars, our friends at Caesars, they have, for some reason, a lot of alternate win totals listed. I wouldn't hate the over 10 wins for the Chargers at plus 180. Yeah, I mean, if things click and uh, it's a great roster, you know, every year everyone says the Chargers have a great roster. Well, you know, finally, maybe they've got the coaching uh, to support that. And yeah, it's funny when you look at the win totals, you see the alternates and you have to click on the alternates to actually get the standard. Ah, so yeah. that's why. Oh, they're, they're okay. like promoting the alternate win totals, but when you click on it, you'll see the regular win total as well. Oh, oh, well, that is that is helpful, Larry. Thank you for uh, thank you for. I was like, why? I was like, maybe they'll fix it one of these days and actually put up the regular <laughs> win totals. Yeah, all right. So you're right. Oh, so you can actually bet the the um, 
Oh, I clicked on the Giants. Okay, yeah, over <laughs> over eight plus one seventy. That's something else right there. Uh, okay, yeah. So I would say that from I would be in on the Chargers over personally um, at nine. I think that's like you said. I think it's a sharp number, but I think this team is going to be good. So I, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. The Denver Broncos. If I get these alternate win totals to open. No wonder I was I was looking on another site. That's why. So wait, are, you, are you just? Oh, I see. Yes. All right. Um, I will have no criticism of Caesar's website. Just was confused about where they were hiding the window. You're not the only one because that's the way it shows up. And I've seen a lot of people say, where's the regular wind tunnel? But it's there. You just have to click it. You just have to click it. Well, that is helpful. All right. So if you go to Caesar's and you're trying to figure out where the wind tunnels are, that's where. Somebody should call them and tell them that they need to stop doing that. The Broncos sit at over under eight and a half. It looks like we, we still have an answer yet as of this recording uh, as to whether the quarterback will be Drew Locke or Teddy Bridgewater, but it does look like Vic Fangio is getting close to a decision. He says he's, 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 he's working on that. This is a really talented roster. The only two things that hold it back are the quarterback position and the division for me. And, and maybe the coaching as well. The coaching uh, is, yeah, so yeah, that's a good point. I don't, do you believe I, in Shermer, you know, as an offensive guy that's going to get the best out of Drew Locke? I think he's going to be the starter, obviously, you know. I do too. We know what Bridgewater is, and and they're they're saying all the right things about Drew Locke, and, and um, you know, he does have a big arm, uh, but he was very inaccurate downfield last year. I mean, he can make the splash play, uh, but he could just as easily throw it away. Um, but you're right. The rest of the roster, uh, impressive. Yeah. Defensively, Sertan, Fuller. I mean, the defense. Well, they. I mean, they got Von Miller, Brad Chubb, Bradley. My boy, Bradley Chubb. Um, you know, it. By all accounts, they've been playing really well in defense. And I, again, I don't love Fangio as a coach by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think he's a good defensive coach. Like his, he's gotten the most out of his defenses. And Shermer, at least, you know, he worked really well as an offensive coordinator. He was the offensive coordinator when the when the Vikings made that the, the Minneapolis miracle run, right? And Case Keenum had that big year. I can see a little bit of Case Keenum and Drew Locke, and Shermer worked well with a defensive-minded coach in in Mike Zimmer. So I sort of wonder if maybe having – I mean, like maybe Shermer's just not a good head coach and he's a good offensive coordinator, or maybe he's just bad at, like, picking where he should – what jobs he should take or something like that. I, I think there's a chance that the Broncos – I don't know if they're a sleeper for the division, but I, I would take the over eight and a half. If I was taking anything here. Yeah, but the problem you're getting into is, and this is the problem. Uh, with the now two, I'm taking three overs in this division. The, the <laughs> two divisions that we have, um, you know, especially when we get to the NFC West, um, I love three of those teams. You know, I love three of them to go over. So you can't go over on, you know, I mean, you can, but you, can, uh, you don't. You don't want to be. You don't want to bet the over on three divisional teams. That's just bad math. Yeah, it's usually not going to happen, but I mean, the weapons are there and the Hamler's already, you know, flashing. We didn't really see him and Judy and Font or Fant. So um, I, I've heard that Cortland Sutton looks kind of banged up still and, and may not be quite right just yet. So that's something that's worth keeping an eye on. But even if he is, like you say, you know, you got Hamler, Judy and, and, and Noah Fant. I mean, they've, they've still got plenty of weapons. If Drew Locke develops into an average quarterback, this is a playoff team. And here's the best part for Denver Giants, Jags, Jets to start. Giants, Jags, Jets to start. That should be three yeah. and oh. Yeah. <laughs> you have to start three and oh, or else it's a, it's a failure. So, All right. I think I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to flip here then. I'm going to go, I'm going to stay away from the Chargers win total because I think, that, and, and I'm going to say I'm in. I think the Broncos is an actual over that I would be willing to take at eight and a half. This is a team that, they lost a bunch of one score games. I think the offense will improve with Shermer there and all those weapons. And I'm, I'm, I'm willing to trust the defense. And I don't think there's as big a path to the defense falling apart as there is with maybe the, uh, with, with the, uh, with the chargers. Yeah. And they were two and six at home last year. You can't expect that again. Yeah. And they, and they remember they had those weird losses too, where it's like they lost to Jacksonville and they lost to Chicago Right, like, and they gave him extra time, booted a long field goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, they could have they been a lot better. Uh, all right, the Raiders. So finagle through this wonderful website that uh, the folks at, at Caesars have crafted. Uh, the, the Raiders win total. Do you have the Raiders in front of you? Yeah, the, the, the regular one uh, is seven right now. Choose over, and the under is even money. Okay. Um, and see now, now they have the Raiders regular season wins. Non all. Now I've stumbled into a page with the regular season wins that aren't alternate. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> what is the, uh, anyway? Yeah, the Raiders over seven minus one twenty, under seven 
even money. Everyone who listens to this podcast is aware that I'm not a huge Raiders fan. Uh, I think John Gruden's a good coach. I think Derek Carr's been a, a, a fine quarterback, but you know, I don't. I look at this roster, Larry, and I just do not see it from a from a defensive perspective. I mean, there's just nothing there really on defense that makes me think this team can compete with a p- potential step forward team like the Chargers or the or the Broncos, and certainly with the Chiefs. Yeah, great division, uh, uh, offensive division for a team that gave up 30 points a game. And I agree with you. And Gakwe is is a nice uh, ad, but but overall, this defense has not done enough to really get better. But I think the biggest concern is, you know, Derek Carr had a, an amazing year last year, but his O line is is pretty much gone. I mean, Hudson's gone, Trent Brown's gone, and this uh, kid Leatherwood, Alex Leatherwood from Alabama. You know, so far it's early. You can't, I'm not going to judge a kid so far, but he was blocking the wrong guys in the first preseason mm. game. Yeah. And he was getting stood up in the run game and it could be another Mike Mayock special where, um, you know, he didn't really take the best guy. So, you know, fell in love with the guy. So I just think when, if his O-line is, is bad, they've had a tremendous O-line. I mean, that's that, been, that their rock. been the backbone of their roster since, John Gruden got there. They reworked the offensive line. They wanted the offensive line to be key. They wanted to run the football. They want J- Josh Jacobs to be their identity. And then they go out and sign Kenyon Drake in the offseason. And they totally, they trade multiple starters on the offensive line, draft Leatherwood. It, I just don't, I haven't seen a single cohesive plan from this team since the second that John Gruden walked through the door. Yeah, even money, you know, and seven and 10, you don't lose. You don't yeah. lose this bet. Uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it as well. Um, so yeah, they're obviously out on the raid. I mean, this seems to be sort of the consensus in the division, but that's okay. I mean, I, I just, I, I can't get in on the Raiders. So I will have, I like, especially if the Broncos and the Chargers are as good as I think they'll be, then I think there's a chance that the Raiders could go one and five in the division. And then all of a sudden you're feeling great about the, you know, about, about that under seven, right? Totally. I mean, this division, uh, the, the roster, the Broncos and the Chargers rosters are just so good. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's really the question in Denver, you know, is, is can Drew Locke, uh, you know, just play well. I saw a lot of comparisons to Josh Allen. I don't, I don't think it's fair though, no. uh, because of, there's no running ability basically with Drew Locke, but the big arm is there. Uh, he wasn't very accurate. Uh, he's only played about a season's worth of game. So, I mean, I, there are a lot of people expecting not a Josh Allen step from last year, but somewhere in the middle, a, a, a step forward. If you get a step yeah. forward from Drew Locke, that Broncos team is going to the playoffs. Uh, all right, let's take a break. And we come back to the NFC West. The Los Angeles Rams are the top team. I uh, Actually, maybe the 49ers. Have, no, the Rams are still plus 180 to win the division. The 49ers, uh, two to one. The Seahawks plus 280. And the Rams are... Now, now I have an alternate win total for the Rams. I'm just I'm yeah. They're both that. over. They're both ten and a half plus one ten. Yes, for, for the over, over ten and a half for the Rams plus one ten. Under ten and a half minus one thirty. Basically, they Vegas Caesar's looking at this and saying, okay, one of these teams is gonna be a little bit one of these teams can get to 12 or 13 wins the other might end up at 10 and that's sort of how we think the division shakes out it's a tough division i love matthew stafford i love sean mcveigh i think their offensive line looks good the cam Akers injury for for whatever reason sort of led me to believe larry that maybe the rams roster is a little more fragile than we've been giving it credit for and that has me flipping a bit towards the niners i would i don't know if i want to go under 10 and a half though with the rams and that juice yeah, I don't want to go under on this team. That was devastating. I mean, I think with him, this would have been pretty much a a, a solid overplay. Uh, but you know, maybe it it means more passing. And and have you seen Tutu Atwell? Have you seen him run? Yeah, he's fast, right? Yeah, four two seven. I mean, just yeah. another toy uh, for Sean McVay. Um, so. I mean, I think it's a massive upgrade with Stafford. I know you've been saying that uh, throughout the off season. It's it's not it's not just incremental. It's it's major, and um, and the defense. But you're right; they're very thin, though. I mean, they lose any of the front line talent, especially on the O line or among the defensive stars. Yep. You know, it's a different different ball game. Yeah. So I would probably go over on the Rams. If I was forced to pay, make a bet on the Rams, I would go over ten and a half. I think it's probably a stay away for me. 
at 10 and a half. Yeah, for me, it's also, it's a lean. It's a lean over. There's yeah. a couple other teams in the division I, I like better. Okay. Uh, the 49ers, we mentioned, also over under 10 and a half. The over plus 105 at Caesars. The under minus 125, of course, the 49ers. All the chatter is about Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance. But I tend to think that this Niners team is better than people think. You know, we had, uh, I think it was uh, either Sam Monson or Steve. I can't remember which one, but they said that the 49ers uh, sneaky in their past defense efficiency metrics last year over at PFF, and they lost Nick Bosa. So they the defense should only get better. I think Trace, a Trey, I'm drafting Trey Sermon everywhere. I think he has, a, I think he has a, like a sneaky shot to lead the league in rushing. If you know, especially if Raheem Mostert and uh, Jeff Wills can't stay healthy, I, I love this Niners team with with all the weapons they have and the coaching they have and the fact that now they have a backup option at the quarterback position if something were to happen to Jimmy G. I love them as well. Two things: injury luck cannot be as bad as it was last year. I mean, they were absolutely decimated. But well, number two, yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say on the injury luck thing, and I think we touched on this before, they – remember, they played back-to-back -back games at MetLife Stadium, and that's where all the injuries occurred, and they were complaining about how bad the turf was. So there's actually like a, a fairly decent logical reason why they won't have as many injuries next year because they don't play at MetLife. Right. And the other guy that – I mean, you mentioned Sermon. There's so many guys I love on this roster, but I don't know if you can guess who it is. This one guy changes an entire offense. George Kittle? Not George Kittle. He's Even a new family. guy. He's a new guy. Oh, a new guy. Oh, Trey Lance. Alex Mack. Oh, agree. I actually agree with that. That is that's a great take. That and is a great take. The Kyle Shanahan history with him when he came to Atlanta. I mean, they were twenty points a game. Then they but had you the, know what? But you know the best you know what, but, offense in football. Correct. But in. you know what you're skipping too. What? Where you know where he was before he came to Atlanta? Cleveland. Yeah, they were first place in the in the freaking AFC North with Kyle Shanahan as their OC and Brian Hoyer as the quarterback when Alex Mack went down with a broken leg and the offense cratered and fell apart. Every single thing I've read about this guy, you know, if I could play football, I would want to play football with Alex Mack. Every single person around him loves the way he carries himself. He's obviously a Pro Bowl center. Uh, I mean, it's just exactly what they needed. It's perfect fit. And yeah. I huge bounce back for that. That's a great, that's a great call on, on Alex Mack. And I, we'd mentioned it in the podcast a bunch because Trent Williams and Alex Mack, you're talking about two guys who know the Kyle Shanahan system as well as anybody in football. And if they're healthy and, and Trey, Ser Trey Sermon, the highest that Kyle Shanahan has ever used in terms of draft capital on a running back, they took him in the third round. He is a picture perfect one cut and burst zone runner. They have Trey Lance who can, you know, come in and use – they're, they're going to use him package plays, I think, like somewhere between 5 and 10% even when Jimmy G is starting. And eventually Trey Lance will probably get the starting job, but I think they want Jimmy G to try and play well if they can. And if the defense is average to above average, this is actually, I think, going to be my Super Bowl pick. So I am, I'm all over the over 10.5 wins here. Two more points. I mean, watching Trey Lance do that play where he – you know, goes all the way to the left and throws, really throws, the and throws across his body. Throws yeah, yeah, back yeah. right was beautiful, but also a fourth place schedule that the Niners get. So yeah, I love over 10 and a half. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be, I'm going to, that is going to be a bet for me. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, the poor Seahawks. So, so, so disparaged. They are 10 wins. Plus one time, just kidding. Actually, not being that 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 crapped on this year. Uh, over under ten wins. Over is plus one ten. Under minus one thirty. Do you think that the addition of Shane Waldron is enough to put the Seahawks over the top and back into the hierarchy of the NFC? I mean, no. When you're high on three teams in the division, you got to be low on one team, and this is my team. I mean, I think ten is safe uh, to go under with uh, with the Seahawks. It's minus one thirty. But, uh, you know, I just don't think the defense is, is uh, much improved. I mean, you do have, like, a good player at each level, you know, Dunlap, Wagner, and Adams. Uh, but besides that, uh, I don't see that their defense got so much better. And, you know, I don't know. I'm just so down on them. I just think that – I think the, the window is passed. I, I think I – I don't know if the, the window is – I don't know if the window with Russell Wilson is closed, but I do think that this team, as they want to be constructed with Pete Carroll's defense in the run game, that that window is passed. 
you you have to be something else. They have to re, they have to find a new identity. And I'm not backing the team for ten for over ten wins. Like if it were nine and a half, maybe in a seventeen game season. But right. you got to get to eleven wins in a division where I I love two of the other teams and the Rams and the 49ers and the Cardinals are no no slouches. I, I can't get there with the Seahawks at that price. Very uh, yeah. I was reading something about how their roster and and I knew it like without knowing it. But I was like, this is a very top heavy roster. They're, they're paying like five guys, 25 or 30 percent. I don't know. I just think the roster uh, beyond the stars that we know, you know, Wilson and DK Metcalf and uh, Lockett um, and Wagner and Jamal Adams, they make all the money. Yeah. And they, they gave Jamal Adams a big contract. It's just I, I agree with you. It's just hard to see how the defense is good. Like, I just don't really see a path to the defense being particularly good. And I, the offense should be fine. I hope, I, I'm excited to see if they run a bunch of no huddle and chunk the ball around. And, and it sounds like they're actually going to throw shorter passes and not rely as much on the deep ball. That's what, you know, they said that defenses figured out that they were always going to be, you know, roll Russ out and then throw deep on play action to try and hit Metcalf and lock it. I, I don't, I, I don't know. I I'm, I'm with you though. I think I'm out on the Seahawks, the Arizona Cardinals over eight a surprisingly eight. low number Larry. i thought we we're gonna see maybe eight and a half or nine but you got three ten win you know three teams with ten wins somebody's got to be the low team clearly it's the best division in football you 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 got the smile on your face like you love the arizona cardinals over eight yeah and you got to pay minus 140 for this uh you know they're, they're definitely roping you in on this but i don't see how you can't because this is definitely going to be the best O-line Kyler Murray has ever had. Yep. And uh, I, I've been watching highlights of Rondale Moore today, and I can't stop. You know, Dude, like, he's, That's he's how excited good. I am about this guy. Um, I mean, J.J. Watt, I mean, they upgraded on both sides. Um, so, yeah, I'm all in on over eight. Yeah, I, I think the only real concern is if you I, – I, I wish we could take the, the, every one of these teams and distribute them into other divisions, basically. <laughs> but it's just frustrating because you, you, you look at the Cardinals, you're like, man, I could really get behind this team as a contender. If I, tr do you, the, my other concern is, do you trust, trust Cliff Kingsbury enough? Or do you think Cliff Kingsbury is a good, um, a good coach? I think he's a good enough play caller, uh, yeah. you know, to scheme up for more and all the other weapons. And I love Edmonds and, you know, Chandler Jones coming back. I mean, you're adding Chandler Jones and JJ Watt. Uh, I just, I just think the defense, they, the defense should be substantially improved. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's all going to be, I, I didn't like seeing Kyler Murray say that he's not going to run as much. Yeah. I didn't Ooh. like that uh, in terms of, of getting to nine wins. <laughs> uh, right, right, but, right. But uh, yeah, this team is this team is absolutely loaded. I mean, Hudson is was a huge add on the offensive line. Um, you know, loaded in terms of yeah, they could win. They could win a couple divisions. Right, right. If they were in the AFC South, they'd be the favorites, or the sure. it, it, or the NFC East for, sure. for um, sure. Actually, I think there's a case to be made that AJ Green could be a nice little bounce back. Uh, season can't be much worse than he was last year. Of course, Hopkins is great. Rondell Moore needs to take some of the Larry Fitzgerald snaps and he needs to be getting these, throw these screens to him and let him explode all over the place. And uh, yeah, I look good offensive line upgraded. They've improved the defense slowly and they have players at every level. And if Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray was taking the step forward last year until he got injured, until he hurt that shoulder. And then he really stopped running. He sort of fell back to earth. They lost a couple of games and they just couldn't close late in the season. I think if Kyler Murray is healthy for 16 games, he'll be in the potentially in the mix for MVP. Oh yeah. I mean, his arrow is going straight up and I, I also like their draft as uh, Avon Collins already yeah. looks good. So uh, yeah, let's get to nine wins. All right, that's the over. We like the Cardinals over. So we like three of the overs, fade the – it's basically we like – in each of these West divisions, we like three of the teams and we're going to fade the other fade, – we're fading the, 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 the Raiders and the Seahawks is, is what we are doing. Uh, all right, Larry, people make sure and go to sportsline.com. Check out all the content over there. And, of course, go subscribe to The Early Edge. It is out every weekday morning. Is it weekend? Weekend, Sue, right? 365. The coach never takes the day off. I, I've seen coach take days off. I saw Alan right. Bell. Alan Bell. Rarely. I'm rarely. Sure. I don't take days. No, everybody, you got to take days off. You do a daily podcast. You have to. Uh, yeah, coaches. Uh, coaches hosting almost 365 days a year, and they give out picks. I mean, if there's a noon baseball game, you guys are all. I'm over. sweating a K prop right now. Oh, who's which K prop? 
uh, Cease under seven and a half. I love a K. Ooh, he's got five, but he's at 82 pitches. All right. Well, let's hope you can cash that one out. Make sure and uh, check that out. The early edge where we find your podcast. Larry is always a pleasure, buddy. Enjoyed it.